Hey everyone, welcome to this latest Azure infrastructure update. And this is the mid-May version. So the last two weeks of changes to Azure. I hope everyone's staying safe and uh, not going too crazy being stuck at home all the time. Since last video, I uh, posted a couple of, sort of technology videos. One is about using PowerShell with Azure Functions. Uh, in the past, we thought about using Azure Automation. You still can to run your PowerShell, but Azure Functions actually provides a really nice way to execute PowerShell in the cloud. So I kind of walk through that, calling it via REST calls, etc. cetera. Um, actually deploying to Azure using GitHub Actions. Again, uh, Azure DevOps is great, but it's really transitioning over to GitHub Actions for our pipelines. So I actually walked through doing a deployment to Azure, just an, an ARM template, using GitHub Actions. And then a deep dive into Azure role-based access control. Focus feature, not saying that's kind of brand, brand new, but it's pretty new. I actually want to focus on this new dash what if capability um, for deploying kind of ARM templates. So in PowerShell, it's kind of the what if, but I can do this across the CLI as well. And the idea of this is, it's very similar to the kind of Terraform plan that you can do. So with Terraform, before I actually um, deploy and make something real, it can show me what's going to happen. So now with this new what if capability, it will actually show me, it will look at what's there, and then show me what the application of the template will actually do. Now I can also use a dash confirm to sort of confirm each of the changes that are going to happen. Now to use this, there is a preview version of the az.resources module. And you can kind of install that using this required version. And you see there's a, there's a preview down there for that. And what this really looks like is you can see here, I'm doing a deployment. It's not there yet. But essentially, it's going to show me in green all of the things that are going to get created. So I say, hey, look, yeah, it's going to create this storage account. It's going to create this container. And it's leaving the one in gray, this other kind of storage account alone. Then after I deployed this, I ran the deployment again. And this time what I did is I modified the type of the storage account from LRS to GRS. And what we can see is it's showing us, hey, look, the SKU is going to change from LRS to GRS. So it's actually going to now give us that ability to really easily see, hey, look, what's this template going to modify? So it's kind of my, my feature of the week kind of thing. So on with kind of what is new. So in the Azure Compute world, um, there is a new Azure VMware solution. This is now a first party offering that's endorsed by VMware. And it's fully compatible with vSphere, vCenter, the NSX-T. Uh, that's actually kind of the entire layer two to layer seven virtual networking stack. Um, we have the virtual SAN technology that takes that local storage and makes it appear at kind of shared storage. And then HCX, that's gonna enable those kind of application, those migrations. And we can think kind of like almost like a bulk live migration capability. All of these things are going to be integrated with that solution. VM level disk bursting for the LSV2 series virtual machines. Now, in the past, we had bursting for virtual machines around CPU, the B series. I had a certain amount of CPU. If I used less than that amount, I could burst up to a higher than normal amount. Then for storage, managed disks, for the premium managed disks had bursting. If I used less than my provisioned IOPS and throughput, I could burst to a higher number. Remember with storage, there's two dimensions. There's the limits of the disk and the limits of the VM. So what this is doing now is for the VM's storage limits, initially just for the LSV2, if I'm using below my provisioned amounts, so imagine, for example, uh, the L16. It has a provisioned amount of 320 megabytes per second. If I'm using less than that, I can start the bank credit and actually burst up to 1280 megabytes per second for up to 30 minutes or until I've run out of kind of my bucket of extra that I can burst to. 
So that's gonna, I think, be rolled out to more types over time. But we're seeing more and more of these ability to burst. And when I think about why this is useful, in the past, we have to provision our resources based on the most we'll ever have. Um, for CPU, now with the B series, I can do less than that. With premium managed disks, I can now do less than that if it's a fairly short term burst. So now on the virtual machine side, if it's storage bursting, I need fairly infrequently, maybe it's startup, maybe it's some batch operation. I can now create smaller virtual machines, I spend less money, but still burst to higher numbers if I need to. And the kind of documentation walks through all of the different series and what my standard is and actually what I can burst to. Then, if we actually go and look at the networking side, even more services are now private link enabled. Remember, private link is that ability to take a PaaS service and project it into our virtual network. It gets its own NIC, its own private IP from our address space. It doesn't have to have anything public facing. So more and more PaaS services now support this. And we again, in the documentation, we can see all the different services that now support private link. If we now go and look at the Azure front door, now we have more edge routing rules. So I can now do things on the edge to say things like, hey, I require HTTPS. Um, I could distinguish between, hey, is this coming from a mobile or a desktop? and then route it to the right version of my page. I could do things like redirects, I can rewrite. There's a whole set of kind of matching conditions I can now do on the edge of front door, and then actions I can take. So I can really do a lot richer set of functionality with front door now. On the storage side, a whole bunch of things. So these blob index tags are interesting. This is not the same as the meta tags we've had already. And those meta tags we have today, I can't really do much with. If I did Azure search, I could maybe make them searchable. But these new type of blob index tags, um, they're automatically indexed. So I can now easily go and find things. So I could create a tag for uh, the type of content, maybe the stage in processing, and I can search on that. But additionally, I can actually now use it as part of the blob lifecycle management. So lifecycle management might be, hey, move it between tiers. It might be, hey, delete it. So now with these blob index tags, I can use that tag as part of my lifecycle management. I could do things like, hey, look, if the status is processed, maybe I move it somewhere else. So these are a new capability. It's in preview, I have to sign up for this. I'll still have the old meta data type tags, but now I'll have these new blob index tags as well. Additionally, we have these enhancements. So now we have GZRS. Now if you think about what this is, when we think about Azure Storage, and actually I'll just quickly um, look at the whiteboard for a second. So if we think about ordinarily, we have kind of a region, and that region is made up of multiple data centers, in this case, availability zones. A regular ZRS, we have three copies of our data always. With ZOS, those three copies are spread over three different availability zones. So with three copies of our data. With this new GZRS, I kind of basically have ZRS locally, then that paired region, well, we have a copy over here as well, three copies of that. That is not ZRS over there. There's just three copies like LRS, essentially. So there's still three copies, but they're not spread over three availability zones. So that is kind of the new GZRS. Three copies in the primary over multiple availability zones, and then asynchronously replicated. It's always async between regions uh, to the paired region. So now we have that SKU. There is the kind of read access variant where I'm actually allowed to connect and read from that. There's also now customer initiated failover. So in the past, and I still can do kind of the Azure managed failover, the failover happens when uh, the Microsoft technicians deem that failover should happen, certain outage. That may not meet your specifications for wanting to failover. So now I can actually go in and I can trigger the failover. 
So what that will mean is it will change the DNS records to now point to the replica. Um, remember it's asynchronous as I just drew. It will tell me the last replicated time. So I'll know, am I going to lose some data? But obviously be prepared. You may lose data, but I'll know how much based on that last replicated time. And again, it shows me that if I do this customer initiated failover. And I can do that through the portal, I can do it through PowerShell, etc. We also have blob versioning. So now what we can actually do is turn on this versioning. As I make changes to a blob, I'll get a new version. And I can always go back and see previous versions of my blob. It will cost me more money, but only pay for the changed blocks. I don't change for a complete copy of every version. It's just the blocks that have changed or added. Uh, that's what will now be in addition to my storage costs. So a lot of cool kind of blob changes. A few miscellaneous things. Um, custom arm rolls are now GA'd in the portal. So I can go in the portal, I can take an existing role and clone it and then tweak the actions that are part of that role or just start from scratch and add actions that I want as part of my role. That last video I just did about role-based access control deep dive, I show all of the custom actions in there. Storage logs. So as a storage previously, it's logging only kind of went to a storage account. Well now I can actually send it to Azure Monitor Logs, i.e. Log Analytics, and or Event Hub. Event Hub is super useful for third party sims um, to publish, subscribe. Now they can go and get it. And that's it. That's kind of all the new changes for the last couple of weeks. I hope that was useful. Um, if this was useful, please like, subscribe, comment, share. And until next video, uh, take care of yourselves.